Hello, and welcome to this installment of COVID-19, What Pharmacists Know Now. My name is Dr. Melanie Carter, and I'm a clinical pharmacy specialist in cardiology with Interior Health, as well as a clinical instructor for the University of British Columbia. Today, I'll be speaking on myocarditis risk with COVID-19 vaccines. And this series is brought to you by the Canadian Society of Hospital Pharmacists BC branch. To begin, I have no conflicts of interest or financial personal relationships to declare. COVID-19 evidence, as we all know, is rapidly evolving, and the information is based on the best available evidence as of January 21st, 2022. And this presentation is aimed towards the general public. The objectives for today's presentation include define myocarditis and a similar condition pericarditis, to describe the association between COVID-19 vaccination and myocarditis, and to outline the risk of myocarditis with COVID-19 vaccination based on age, sex, and vaccine type. Lastly, I'll attempt to quantify the risk of myocarditis with COVID-19 infection compared to COVID-19 vaccination. So what is myocarditis? It's an inflammatory condition of the heart. Inflammatory cells, such as lymphocytes, can be found within the heart muscle in this condition. Heart damage can occur and is not related to a blood flow problem, which is what typically occurs with an acute coronary syndrome or heart attack. Often, a virus is associated with myocarditis. A similar condition to myocarditis is pericarditis. It's an inflammatory condition of the heart sac or pericardium. Fluid may accumulate between the two layers of this part pericardial sac. Pericarditis has been associated with infectious, autoimmune, or traumatic causes, and it may extend into the actual heart muscle, and this is then called myopericarditis, a combination of myocarditis and pericarditis. Moving forward throughout the rest of this presentation, the terms myocarditis, pericarditis, and myopericarditis can be used interchangeably as the evidence in the literature surrounding this related to COVID-19 infections uh, is the same for all of these different disease states. So how common is myocarditis? It's diagnosed in approximately 10 to 20 individuals per 100,000 each year in the general population and it is known to be more common in young males. So it's still very infrequent. So if you look at this big dot plot, you can see two people out of 10,000 per year would develop myocarditis. What are the symptoms of myocarditis? So myocarditis has a number of different symptoms, including fatigue, decreased exercise tolerance, patients may experience racing or fluttering hearts, can get chest pain, and some patients may even lose consciousness. It may be associated with a viral prodrome, meaning that patients may have flu-like illness before, so fevers, chills, aches. Pericarditis has a few very hallmark characteristics. The most noteworthy is chest pain that's worse with deep breaths, cough, or lying flat. And it may also be associated with systemic illness, such as having fevers, chills, or aches. So there can be a lot of overlap between these two different disease states, as I previously mentioned. How is myocarditis managed? A variety of different medications can be used to manage symptoms, to decrease the workload on the heart, and to prevent recurrence. So a combination of pain medications, immune modulating medications, and medication for a weakened heart may be used. So that ends the portion of the presentation discussing myocarditis and pericarditis. And now we're going to talk more specifically about COVID-19 vaccination and the connection to myocarditis. We have known for a long time that various viruses and vaccination against viruses can be associated with myocarditis. Safety monitoring systems have been used for a long time and are used across the world to identify potential concerning adverse events after immunization. And in this case, safety monitoring systems has identified an association between COVID-19 mRNA vaccines and myocarditis or pericarditis. Most of the cases that have been identified are in adolescents and young adults. They were more common in young males and after second doses, and usually occurred within a few days of vaccination, and most patients presented with mild symptoms. 
So probably the best evidence to help us understand the connection between vaccination uh, and myocarditis is from Denmark. A Denmark population cohort study where we looked at an entire population over a length of time gives us some insight into the rates of myocarditis. So the Denmark population, about 5 million people aged 12 years and over, were observed. And the primary outcome that was looked at was myocarditis. And 1.7 cases were diagnosed per 100,000 people. So comparing that to unvaccinated people, as you can see at the bottom, there does appear to be a higher risk, in particular with the Moderna vaccine. So at the very bottom here, you can see about a four times higher chance of developing myocarditis with Moderna vaccine compared to not being vaccinated. In contrast, though, you can see after vaccination, the risk of dying or having a cardiac arrest seems to go down, not surprising. So here, uh, 0.4 to 0.5 times uh, the risk of cardiac arrest or death following vaccination compared to being unvaccinated in the same population. So to summarize, Moderna vaccination was associated with an increased risk of myocarditis, but ultimately absolute rates of myocarditis were low and clinical outcomes after having myocarditis were mild. So now on to some Canadian data. The Adverse Events Following Immunization Database is a database that looks at side effects or potential side effects after immunization. And individuals or healthcare providers can submit reports to this database. And it's actually a requirement for healthcare professionals to submit reports for significant or serious adverse events. In this database, after COVID-19 vaccination, there is a reported rate of myocarditis following the Moderna vaccine of three per 100,000 doses. And it's highest amongst males age 18 to 29 at a rate of 15.9 per 100,000 doses. It's lower with the Pfizer vaccine at 1.9 per 100,000 doses, and also still a little bit higher amongst the young males aged 18 to 29 at 2.6 per 100,000 doses. So we're still talking about very rare events uh, right after immunization, so that short window after immunization. So now moving on to COVID-19 infection and myocarditis. We've known for a long time that viruses can cause heart damage or impact the heart. And the connection between COVID-19 infection and myocarditis is thought to be multifactorial, including direct viral injury to the heart muscle, as well as an overactive host's immune response. So here you can see in this picture, COVID-19, also known as SARS-CoV-2, binds to the ACE2 receptor on the myocardium or heart muscle. And it triggers an immune response. So a U.S. population-based analysis looking at 20,000 young adults with documented COVID-19 infection was undertaken, and they looked primarily at myocarditis. And in the highest risk cohort, age 12 to 17-year-old males, there was 45 cases per 100,000 COVID-19 cases of myocarditis. So this analysis concluded that amongst 12 to 17 year old males, the group that appears to be at highest risk of myocarditis across the board, the risk of having a diagnosis of myocarditis from COVID-19 infection is about 5.9 times higher than from vaccination. So 7.7 .7 cases per 100,000 vaccine recipients compared to 45 cases per 100,000 COVID-19 cases. So in summary, myocarditis has been associated with COVID-19 mRNA vaccination, but this is a rare event. And the risk of myocarditis appears to be higher with COVID-19 infection compared to vaccination. Benefits of vaccination far outweigh the risk of myocarditis with COVID-19 vaccination. In BC, 
Pfizer vaccine is recommended if available for the primary series in the younger population because of the risk of myocarditis over Moderna. Thank you for your time.